What's going on, family? We're back on here with the Juke Man, and today we're going to be doing a preview of the Seattle Seahawks going up against our New York Giants. I got my boy here, Jay Rez. Jay Rez, what it do, brother? What's going on? Glad to be here. Hey, bro. Uh, so I just wanted to give a little insight on who you are. Um, obviously, you've been my friend since high school, one of my best friends, but tell me, how have you been, like, how are you a Giants fan? How did you start becoming a Giants oh. fan? And you've been going with this misery just as I was, so let me hear it, bro. It all started, y'all can call me a bandwagon, 2011, the Super Bowl. I had a cousin from New York come down from New York. He was in town. He was like, hey, yo, let's throw on the game. I'm like, all right, whatever. Here's the remote. Throws on the game. All I had to see was Victor Cruz ca catch a touchdown pass and hit the salsa. And I was like, this is the sport right here. Yeah. This is the sport. And I, that's when I came cemented into the Giants fan. Because Victor Cruz, my all-time Giants player, all-time favorite player. First jersey I got, loved him. Gotcha. Just stuck around, bro. Had to stay loyal to the family too. That's why I'm a Yankees fan without being a Yankees fan. There you go. Nah, you don't even have to say that last part. You're a Yankees fan. I could tell Matt Chico <laughs> with the Puerto Rican flag. So Victor Cruz being Puerto Rican, you being Puerto Rican. Obviously, that links up with that. So dope. And then after 2011, obviously we had a fall off and we haven't done anything since. But this year, that will change. This year, it is changing. So we're going to dive into that. So obviously, our preview content stays the same. It's going to be our what to watch for, our who to watch for, and our road to victory, man. So obviously, going off the top, we're going to do our what to watch for. And the first thing to look at, who would have thought two of the quarterbacks in the NFC that are leading their teams to a winning record? Daniel Jones and Geno Smith, man. So our yes, yes, Daniel Jones till we fall. But... Daniel Jones and Geno Smith, man, that matchup is intriguing. Obviously, both of them surprising each team. Geno Smith, I feel like it's more of a surprise than Daniel Jones. But seeing what Daniel Jones can do without weapons and seeing what Geno Smith is working with, Geno Smith had Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. Like, he has some guys to throw the ball to. When you look at Daniel Jones, he doesn't. So diving into that matchup, what do you think about Geno Smith versus Daniel Jones? So with Geno Smith, man, as you said, he has weapons to throw to. Tyler Lockett. DK Metcalf, although I don't think he's going to be playing this game. So that's a little bit better for us. He has a better O-line. So, I mean, Geno Smith, he set up for success over there. Unlike with Daniel Jones, we didn't give him the weapons to go ahead and do so. We're just not giving him the whole line. So that's why I give him props there. Of course, he's going to show out there. But not, not too much to be worried about, unlike my man Daniel Jones, on the other hand. Been saying he's been a man since the day he came in on his debut for the Tampa Bay Bucks. And not everybody's seen it. But if you put any other QB in the position Daniel Jones is doing, they're not going to win. They're not going to win. I, I don't know who you think is going to do better better than Daniel Jones in this position. Yeah, so I agree. all y'all kids out there. I agree, bro. The no, thing is, no success, bro. I'm telling y'all. So, Daniel I, Jones, I, mean, I think he's going to carry. He's going to be a big factor in this game. He's really going to carry us as long as with Saquon as he's already been doing. I'm saying another 300-yard overall game, bro. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think he's definitely in tune for that. The Seattle defense isn't that great. Um, you saw the shootout that they got into with the Detroit Lions. Um, but overall, man, the Data Jones haters, I dropped my video. That's my most viewed video. Once again, shout out to you guys who did watch that video and uh, commented and subscribed. A lot of my subscribers did come from that video. But there's still haters out there, bro. They still don't give him the respect that he deserves at the end of the day. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's going to take, bro. But all I know is that he just keeps playing the way he's playing. There's nothing you can say about this guy. He has to come back next year. Um, but we talked about that in another video. But I definitely think Daniel Jones is the better quarterback here. Like, not even – it's not even a debate in my opinion. Geno Smith has been turning up, but I like to see what he can do against our defense. Our defense is pretty nice in my opinion. Uh, you saw Trevor Lawrence do a lot of things against us well. Um, but obviously, the main thing is that running game that the Jacksonville Jaguars had. The biggest thing that the Seahawks have is their running game. Going into our next part for the what to watch for is going to be the running back position. Obviously, for them, they have Kenneth Walker. Rashad Penny did get hurt. That emerged him as a starting running back. And, bro, he went off for like 200 yards last week. So he's definitely a weapon that we're going to have to look to shut out. And then, you know the man. The man, the myth, the legend, the best running back in the league right now, man. Saquon Barkley on our side of the ball. Both of these quarterbacks have a good running game to lean on to. But it's just about like when that running game is not there, how will they perform and how can they perform? Yeah. But going against like our running game, like what do you think for the Seahawks running game? We got gashed by Travis Etienne. What do we need to do to be able to stop that for the Seahawks side? Man, my thing, I think Kenneth Walker is a more like hard hitter, hard runner compared to Etienne, bro. 
he sees a gap, he's going to hit it harder than ETN could. It's a little bit of a smaller back. So I have way more concern than I do for ETN. If we don't get a hold on this guy, as I said earlier on the phone, we're going to see like a 200-yard, in my bad, a 100-yard game and like yeah. three touchdowns from this man, bro. Like, yeah. It's doable, so we got to make sure that we lock down up in the front. I want Big Cat Williams to do something. Like, we haven't seen his name the way that we did three years ago, two, three years ago, when he really went off. Yeah. Like, I, just, I want him to start doing the same thing that my man, uh, Dexter Lawrence, there you go. The way that my man Dexter Lawrence is producing, I want Big Cat to produce it. If, if, if he could really stuff up that, that A, B gap, we'll be all right. Yeah, I think so too. All in all, yeah, Travis Etienne. The thing that came with the Jaguars is like they they like to do a lot of different misdirection, and um, that led to obviously our linebackers being sucked in and Travis Etienne hitting the hole and he was gone. He's more of a burner. Kenneth Walker's a burner as well, but um, something that's underrated is that he's a little more compact. So it's a lot harder to tackle a guy when he's more compact. Like you can't just go for his legs. Like his legs might be where his head is at. Like in terms of like trying to get low and tackle him. So. Kenneth Walker is someone to look out for. I think Saquon Barkley at the end of the day is still going to take over this game. Um, the Seattle Seahawks defense is not ranked as highly as some of these other defenses that we played. So hopefully we're still able to establish the run. And you saw it towards the end of the Jaguars game. The Jaguars are good against the run. They were like second in the in the NFL in defense in terms of stopping the run. At the end of the game, we were blowing them out, bro. Like obviously 200 yards rushing on the ground from Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. But that was all Saquon at the end of the game. So... Definitely like to see how Saquon's able to develop his game. And I think he's in prime position for a big game, especially with some offensive linemen out. You don't want to really set Daniel Jones to drop back every single play and try to throw the ball. You don't want him to get sacked. So you're going to want to run that ball. And I think he's going to be taking over. Um, but going into the last part for the what to watch for, man, it's going to be Brian Dayball going against Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll is a well-accomplished coach, as you know. You know, we won a couple games, went to the playoffs, won a couple of Super Bowls. But um, all in all... Yeah, yeah, didn't run the ball. He didn't even win a couple <laughs> Super Bowls. He went to a couple Super Bowls, but only won one. So my bad on that. But Coach Dayball, man, he's been off to a 6-1 and one start as a head coach. This is like one of the first times, I believe, since 1929 that a Giants head coach starts off this well. So yeah. he's shown what it takes that he can really man the fort down. And um, as you see, like a lot of the times – the players kind of react off of their head coach, and it just feels like whenever stuff gets bad or it seems like it's a rough in the game – our team is even keeled. Like they're not really tripping. They're not really killing themselves like they used to. And that's because Brian Dayball is setting that like that mood where, all right, it's just how we respond. Like next play, respond. Next play, respond. And I just feel like that's what we feel like when it comes to Brian Dayball. So like, what do you think in terms of like Brian Dayball like helping this team out going against a good coach in Pete Carroll? With Dayball, bro, like compared to to Joe Judge, like I know that that the players had the, the fire with them at the beginning of the start. But I feel like the ball, they will, he's just the guy, bro. Like, he's not going to overwork our players and lead to injuries. So I'm, I'm confused as to why we're getting so many injuries. That's beyond me. But with the few, the snaps that we do take in practice and in game, bro, it's always game time, bro. It's 100% all the time. And that's why we're coming out winning these games. People say that we don't, you know, start out good in the beginning. We don't. But those adjustments, bro, cannot be ignored. Especially from the Titans, from the, that's, the, that's the first one. The Titans, the adjustments to come in, go for the two and win the game, bro. It takes balls of steals. And that's why I call it, man, the balls, bro. Yeah. He's nah, just literally. like that. Like, Carroll. I mean, I've always seen him more as a maybe good coach. Again, didn't decide to run the ball to see if that plays any factor today. To see if he decides to trust Geno Smith to throw the ball with DK Metcalf out. So. But see if he decides to, to, to abuse Kenneth Walker. And if he does find a way to get him into the game plan, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah, man. It's just two good head coaches in this game because nobody expected the Seahawks to be where they're at. They're four and three. Obviously, we're more of the story because we're six and one. But we thought the Seahawks team was going to be last place. Right now, they're first in that division. So, And they got the Rams and the Niners in that division. So it's exciting yeah. to see two good teams. I will say, I mean... Pete Carroll got beat by Joe Judge two years ago. I know we all remember that game when they went down to Seattle with Colt McCoy and we were able to take over Seattle and win. So hopefully that just the tides keep turning that way and we're able to do the same thing this year. But transitioning to our who to watch for, man, I know you have a player that you picked on on the offense side of the ball, man. Who's your who to watch for? Who to watch for? My brother, Wondell Robinson. Let me tell you. That week that he went off, I was the first one to put that waiver claim into my fantasy league, picked him up on both of them. 
I believe in him so much now because he's a good player. He, he's very similar in play style with KT, which I can't wait for. That's a whole other story. I'm not going to get into that. Yeah, no. I'll get so frustrated, go off on a tangent. But he's good because he's taking – with Bellinger out, he's going to take like – we went from like 60% of the snaps. This man's going from 100 with other receivers that can't catch. Daniel Jones, that's going to be his number one guy cemented for this week and a couple weeks to come until we get some – if we decide to trade or if KT comes back – but it's going to be Wanda Robinson. He's going to have a huge game. Yeah. Every single mm-hmm. game so far, like he's played in, he's only, this is his third game coming into this. And um, he was heavily featured last game, um, mm-hmm. especially on the first couple of drives. Like he got targeted like four times on the first drive. And um, I definitely expect his role to even get bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger because our wide receiver rune is trash, bro. Like we don't have anybody else to really throw it to. So Wanda should was, be a big um, factor in this game coming up. Um, my who to watch for man is going to be for Xavier McKinney. And the reason why I say that is Geno Smith is doing him. Obviously, you know, he's making the throws so on and so forth, but Xavier McKinney is locked down in the back, bro. Like he's, he's, we have a good defensive front. We got some guys that, you know, we blitz and we try to make the ball come out quick, but you see what Geno Smith has been able to do. He's been throwing deep balls to Tyler Lockett, deep balls to these different receivers. And Xavier McKinney, my prediction is that he's going to be able to lock this team down. And hopefully he comes out with an interception. Geno Smith is prone to turning the ball over. He's won some of these games, but he's also threw picks in these games. And funny enough, you know, comparing Daniel Jones to Geno Smith, Daniel Jones used to be the guy to give the ball up. Geno Smith, he's going to be yeah. looking to, uh, obviously, it's a revenge game. Loki, nobody's talking about this, but Geno Smith, how he took over and snapped Eli Manning's streak of uh longest quarterback starts geno smith snapped that we're gonna see what he's been able to do this game and um like i said man revenge game for him hope he's gonna try to throw the ball everywhere Xavier mckinney needs to come away with a pick um but going into our last segment obviously is going to be the road to victory man um i know we both have different sides as well for road to victory i know for the offensive side you had somebody what's your road to victory man man not somebody a couple of the road to victory this game, we just lost Evan Neal. We lost I don't know if we officially lost, but he can't he came into the game. Was it was it Glenn? No, not was it Brennison? We lost Brennison. Yeah. But we did get Nates activated. Don't see him playing a lot. He's not gonna have a heavy start. He's just coming off from this brutal injury. It's even a miracle this man is coming in this early into the game. I was expecting playoff run Nick Gates to come yeah. in, but he's coming in early. Don't see him taking a lot of snaps, so we need other guys to step up. And Matt Pert is back, so let's see if he steps up. And you know, they just got to do their role, man. Protect Daniel Jones. We need these receivers that don't know how to catch, learn a way to get open and catch, and he's gonna need that time. So yeah, no, first. literally. Um, when it comes to obviously left tackle, we don't have to look that way or worry about that side. Andrew Thomas no. has not a lock, best offensive tackle in the league easily. So. We don't got to worry about the backside. It's about being able to hold up for Daniel Jones. Hopefully, he's able to make some throws, as well as, like I said, man, the running game. The running game needs to pick up. Josh Azudu looks good in the running game because he's very quick. Um, They said that when he was coming out of college. And, hey, bro, you got drafted in the third round for a reason, bro. Time to contribute. Hopefully, he holds his end up. I don't know a big defensive lineman. I know they had DJ Reed. Um, He's a good interior defensive lineman. But off of the edge, bro, I don't think they have anyone that really scares me compared to the other teams that we played. So, Going into this matchup, man, the offensive line should do good. And then last, man, for my road to victory, it's going to be – I had Landon Collins up there, but it's going to be for the whole linebacker group, man. Once again, the Seahawks like to rush the ball. And what's our one deficiency on defense? They don't stop the run. We have yet to stop the run, really. I thought we were good against it, especially holding Derrick Henry in the beginning, but yeah, it's been – gone since so literally the linebacker group all together including landon collins he should get a lot more snaps coming into this game um but we just need to be able to hit the holes our defense alignment is going to do their job you know they're going to be able to pass rush they're going to be able to clog up some holes but it's time for the linebackers to really step in and make some plays bro take crowder i'm calling you out we got smith i'm calling you out and landon collins should get a lot more snaps we just need good linebacker play this matchup you know, they do actually have a good tight end in uh, Disley as well. So we need able to hold down Disley. Hopefully, the linebacker group all together has a good game. And once they have a good game, bro, I think we shut down the running game. Make Geno Smith beat us, and we'll see what happens. He's been able to beat other teams. But this Giants team is 6-1, and one, baby. It's a different type of time right now, bro. It's a different type of time. So, uh, yeah, man, that does wrap up this preview. Obviously, we always throw out a score prediction. So, John, what is your score prediction for this matchup? 
Okay, so I have this matchup being a high-scoring game. Believe it or not, y'all need to tune in because I'm seeing above 20 in both sides, man. I think it's going to be a uh, – I'd give the Seahawks 20 at most. So 20 for the Seahawks, and then with Giants coming up on top of it, let's say 27. 27 to 20. 27 to 20, Giants take the W. Obviously, we're going to go Giants taking the W. Um, I want to see us score more points than that, but <laughs> – Every single week, bro, we've scored enough to win. And honestly, that's all I care for. You know, whether it's 14 points or 24. As long as we come up with the W, that's cool with me. So I got us winning 24 to 14. Um, Seahawks are a good matchup. We are still underdogs coming into this matchup, which is disrespectful, bro. Last week, we were 5-1 and one going against the 2-4 and four Jaguars, and we were underdogs. Same thing carries on this week, but that's okay, bro. Stay on that side. Keep betting against us. Keep on doing it. We're going to come out victorious and just keep getting these dubs. So, yeah, man. Do you got anything else on this matchup? It's going to be a great game, entertaining game. It's going to be another one of Daniel Jones' best games, and it's going to be Wandale Robinson's biggest game by far, I would imagine. And we, just to see who's going to plug in for that tight end position with Bellinger gone, it's going to be interesting. It's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good matchup. Close one. A nail biter. Got it. you. Let's go. All right, man. Hopefully – Y'all stay tuned. We set our predictions. Make sure you keep some tabs on that. If you aren't already, man, subscribe down below, man. Road to 1K is now active. It used to be Road to 100. We surpassed that, bro. Y'all smashed that. So Road to 1K is active. Like it down below, of course. We need to put this content out there. And comment down below. What's your prediction? Are the Giants going to come out with a W? If you're a Seahawks fan, welcome to the channel. Y'all want to get smacked this week, though. I'm just letting y'all know. But uh, comment down below. Subscribe, man. And once again, thank you for j Res for jumping on this stream, man. If you do want to jump on these previews, it is open for the fans, man. Follow me on my IG, the juke right here. And um, once you follow me, DM me, bro. We got a couple more fan previews coming up. If you want to be a part of it, let's go. Um, so once again, subscribe down below, man. I got more videos to my left right here. And I'll catch you guys in the next vid. Peace. Giants are undefeated, man. The Giants are undefeated. Clap it up. Clap it up. Yes, sir. When it comes to the most valuable player, most valuable player to the team, most valuable player on the best team. I think this team is in good hands, and if we are healthy, the whole East needs to be on a lookout.